So welcome everybody to this session with the Lifelong Learning Centre University of Leeds call, called Studying for a Job You'll Love. Um, this is a session that we've put together for people who are interested in university study, who've not been to university before and who would really like to ask some more questions and just get a bigger picture really of the different steps that you would take when planning your career pathway or thinking about moving into a certain area of work or, or studying for a job that you'll love um, and what steps are the best ones to take. Um, obviously we want people to um, be well informed and we want people to save time as well. So we've put this session together really to make sure that people have the um, opportunity to uh, plan uh, effectively for the future. So I'm going to pass over now to my colleague, um, Denise, who's going to take us through a couple of slides and some welcomes. OK. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we're going to start with just some welcome saying who we are and obviously letting you say hello as well. So I'm Denise Edmonds. I'm the Employability and Guidance Officer at the Lifelong Learning Centre. And it's my role to um, speak with people who are thinking about coming to university to look at their individual circumstances and help them plan their next routes. We offer a free and partial service, one to one over the telephone so at the end of this session if any of you do feel as though you want to talk about your circumstances Mohammed and I will be delighted to speak with you would you like to introduce yourself Mohammed? hello I hope everybody can see me on their screen and yeah my name is Mohammed and I'm one of the guidance workers within the university I work across the university with admissions tutors and really we're here to help you uh, gain entry to higher education. It doesn't have to be the University of Leeds, it can be any university, and we're here to help you make decisions and make an application if you want to university. Back to you, Kate. Thank you. Casey, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> yes, hello, I'll just pop my camera on. Yeah, hi, um, it's me again. Um, yeah, so I'm Communities and Partnerships Officer. So we work a lot in the community with different organisations um, such as the Job Centre or Job Shops or um, uh, schools and colleges, uh, community centres. And we really um, want to give people um, the right information to know about their choices going into higher education. Uh, it's all about equal opportunities, really, making sure that people have um, a good amount of knowledge so that they can make informed decisions. But nice to meet you all. Thank you. And finally, then over to you. Um, in the chat function, would you all like to just say how are you feeling today, please? This is where you're all frantically typing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daniel's got a bit of backache. Oh, sorry about that, Daniel. <laughs> mm. And Olivia's glad it's cooler. Yes, I am too, but I could do with a bit of sunshine now, I think. Yep, Sarah, I'm missing the sun too. <laughs> oh, you're feeling well, Will. That's good. That's a bit hard to say, actually, isn't it? Well, Will. Helena, how are you feeling? Isaiah, how are you feeling? Oh, Mohammed's great. That's good to hear. Hiya, Leon. Thank you for joining the session. We've got a chat function on the bottom right hand corner. We've just started. If you'd like to pop something in there so that we know that you can hear us. Oh, Helena, I'm glad you're excited to be part of this session. Let's hope you get something good from this. OK, should we move on then? Um, keep using the chat function. We'll, we'll keep chatting to you that way as well if you'd like to um, say anything else. So the session aims today, we want to talk you through the routes into careers step by step. So we're going to give you a general overview of the normal steps that you would take. But sometimes if you're joining university as a mature student, there are opportunities to be able to jump steps 
groups and that's what we'd like to talk you through as well. We're then going to talk about um, specific careers so if there is a particular role that you're interested in we'll try and give you some guidance as to how you might make that um, those steps forward. We can answer any questions that you've got so keep asking your questions through the chat function and we'll pick them up as we can and then we're going to point you to some resources at the end that might be able to help you. So now, sorry, I've moved on too many slides there. Now what I'd like you to do is to use the whiteboard function. So actually on the, on the PowerPoint slide, I want you to write a few words about what it is that you'd like to know about today. Now at the top of the screen, there is a big T. If you click on the T, and then click on the screen where you'd like to write, that will open a text box for you and you'll be able to type. So please feel free to do that, please. So what we're trying to do is get you to think about any questions you may have about any careers you've been thinking about. Now, there's a lot of information out on the internet and sometimes that can be actually confusing because some of it's aimed at uh, those people leaving school and college and it can be very different for mature entrants. So any questions you can think of, any anything around uh, getting into particular careers, that's, that's what we're here for today. Okay, applications. Um, yeah, we weren't really going to cover those today, but we're happy to cover them if, if that's something that you need us to talk about. Alternative routes into university. Yes, absolutely. That's what the session's about today. Anything else that you'd like to hear about? If anyone's having problems actually typing onto the board, if you want to type into the chat function instead, um, we can pick that up. And if people are having problems with the chat function, you could also email the question in and we'll, we'll put it onto the board ourselves. Or if you want to, feel free to turn your mic on and tell us. <laughs> yeah, do mature students have to interview for some courses? Uh, yes, we'll talk you through that as well. But yes, yeah. that is something that you can do. What jobs can professional studies lead to? Professional studies is one of the courses that we run in the Lifelong Learning Centre. It is a course just for adults. Um, and professional studies could actually lead to a multitude of, of careers because it's actually a bit of a pick and mix of a course. You get the opportunity to select an awful lot of the modules that you choose to study. So it can really lead to any career you want it to lead to. I mean, what, what we can tell you is what people have done in the past and where people have gone to uh, from professional studies in the past. So um, in the past, people have gone right from becoming probation officers to social workers to teachers. Now, you may think, right, why would I want to do professional studies and then go into something like social work or something like teaching? Uh, the reason you, you may want to do that is if you're unsure about uh, which direction you want to do, go into, but you do want to come in to university as a mature student and you want a degree which is going to give you flexibility um, around choosing particular modules to uh, specialise in, then professional studies can be a very good choice because what you could do is a three-year degree, which is the professional studies, and say partway through you're interested in becoming a social worker, you could do some modules from, from our uh, Department of uh, Sociology and Social Policy um, as part of your professional studies degree, which would gear you up towards a career 
in social work and then you could do an MA, a one year MA in social work, which would qualify you as the as a social worker. So the MA would give you the qualified teachers, uh, qualified status, the uh, social work qualified status, uh, but the professional studies would allow you to access the MA in in uh, social work. So it would it come four years in total rather than a three year degree, but it would give you a lot more flexibility. And equally, uh, at the end of the professional studies, if you thought right, I want to go into uh, primary school teaching, you could do the PGC primary and uh, qualify as a primary school teacher. Again, within professional studies, what you would do is you'd pick some modules which would uh, set you up towards getting into primary school teaching. So you might do some around childhood studies, childhood development. Uh, equally, some people are going to say probation service. Again, they pick modules from um, the crime and justice de uh, degree. Um, or uh, some of the introductory uh, introduction to law, sociology, uh, criminology modules, and all those would help you uh, towards a career as a, as a, as a probation uh, officer and going in as a as a graduate uh, 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 fast track scheme. So that's the kind of things people have gone into in uh, when they've uh, looked at professional studies. But the whole long list of uh, uh, roles people have gone into. Um, should we pick another one, Denise? Okay, I think the other ones will probably be covered more within the session. So I think mm. I think we'll maybe move on to the session now, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as the UCAS application goes, it's not probably something that we're we're going to have time to talk about today. But we can help you individually with that if you'd like us to. Um, the other thing that probably we're not planning to cover today is the mature student finance. But we do have student finance talks done. In, uh, separately to this so we will be able to give you some help and guide you towards when those sessions are taking place. Casey do you know anything more about when the next student finance session is? Hi um, yes I've got my diary um, right Thank in front you. of me. <laughs> oh they do come in handy these diaries. Um, oh well we've got a session this Friday called studying as a mature student um, and then, but I think that's more around the practicalities once you're here. There's one next Thursday, the 9th of July, called Getting Into Uni. And that will be a really uh, practical um, practical session. Yeah, and Olivia's put the link there in the, um, in the chat. So, yeah, I would, recommend, I would recommend going to the Getting Into Uni session, definitely. Um, that's run by John and Fiona, our colleagues. Um, and John's got a lot of knowledge around um, the the initial steps, and you know, write write in your um, your personal statements and things like that. Yeah, in, in very general terms, if you're applying to any full-time course at university, you apply through UCAS. But if you're applying to any part-time course at uni, you apply directly to the university. Uh, but yeah, those other courses will be able to help you with those uh, questions. So we're going to move on to the main body of the session now, where we're going to um, look at the main stages that you could take to get into university and the steps that you might be able to jump because you're a mature student. I'm going to hand over to Mohammed to do slide one and then we're going to alternate through these. OK, so. So, so to start off with, um, what universities are looking at is, will you be ready for university uh, in terms of coming in and understanding um, where when you're in lectures? So what they're looking at is a minimum level of English and maths. Now, you your English may be great and it, that, that's fine. But if you if you wanted to certify that your English is at a certain grade, then what the universities look at is the GCSEs, and the standard uh, entry is a GCSE uh, grade four uh, in English. Now, if you've done um, the old O levels, 
the GCSE O levels. So again, a C grade in English tells the university that you're at a minimum grade. Now, it's not essential to have the GCSE English and Maths to enter university, but it's a way of, of the university quality assuring that you are at a certain uh, level in your English and Maths. And that's why they generally ask for a GCSE grade C in, in English and Maths. Now, there are alternative ways to prove your English and Maths. Uh, and some universities will accept the functional skills level two, um, which, which you can do uh, at colleges or local uh, centres. Um, so the level two in, in, in literacy and numeracy, again, is acceptable. And another way the universities may uh, ask you to, 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 to assure your literacy and, and numeracy is by doing uh, a, a short test at the university, and we call that a matriculation test. And again, what they do is they give you a short test in English and maths. Um, they, they give you past papers beforehand, um, and they try and support you through that. And again, it's just to assure the university and yourselves when you're applying that you, you cope with the work within the university. So that's that's really um, your first step is to think about how am I going to prove my English and maths? Have I done, have I already got GCSEs in English and maths? Um, have I got the level two in literacy and numeracy? Or um, would, I, would I be looking at a matriculation test uh, at university, which is specifically for mature learners? Uh, now, not all the degrees require you to have the English and Maths uh, at GCSE, but some degrees where the professional bodies, such as nursing, social work, midwifery, it's the professional bodies, they require you to have that minimum standard, then the matriculation test is not enough. You would need to, to think about uh, getting the GCSE in English and Maths grade four if you didn't have those. Thank you, Mohammed. And just to say, if you are thinking about doing the matriculation, um, things like BBC Bite Size is really useful for you to look at to kind of give you an idea of what the curriculum is and what you might be tested on. So that's your step one. We're now going to talk you through step two. So step two is where we're looking at you having the equivalent of a level three qualification. So this would be um, equivalent to doing A-levels or a BTEC national when people would normally do um, after school age of 16, so between 16 and 18. Occasionally, some people do MVQ training in the workplace, and it might be that you might have got an MVQ level three in administration, in IT, in engineering. And again, that might be OK for you to enter then directly onto the degree. If you don't have those level qualifications and you are an adult over the age of 21, you can do something called an access to higher education course. And these courses are run in most um, local colleges. Um, the colleges do them in a variety of subject areas. So you would choose a subject area that's relevant to the degree that you want to progress on to. If you do an access to higher education course, it will take you a year. And within that year, you will then be able to apply to a number of universities that you would like to progress onto their courses once you've completed your access course and got the required results. An alternative to this could be if foundation years are offered at universities. And this, again, would be a year long course but rather than the access to higher education course where you can then apply to a number of universities, if you do an access a foundation year at a university, you are actually then connected to that university. And the intention there is that as soon as you finish that foundation year, as long as you get the right marks, you'll progress straight away onto the degree programme of your choice at the same university. Now, for some adults who don't have level three qualifications, but have got 
significant and relevant work experience, you might be able to apply for alternative entry. And this is where the programme manager will set you some kind of an assignment, which then they will mark and check that you're working at the right ability level to be able to cope okay to go straight on to the degree. If you do the alternative entry test and you're not deemed as being at the right level, then that's where they might offer you the foundation year instead. Does anybody have anything else to add to that or any questions about that? We just had a couple of questions in the chat, Denise. Oh, thank um, you. I've not been looking at that while I've been uh, doing it. Sorry, I'm on the moderator chat. Oh, I'll worry. just go back onto the other one. Sorry. Just might be worth reading them out for the recording. It was Leon had a question. Yeah, Leon, Leon asked about key skills in college, which would be the same as functional skills. So that would be your qualification in in um in replacement of maths and English at GCSEs. So some universities will accept them. Um, University of Leeds don't, but if you did have those level two qualifications, then we would let you sit the matriculation test to check your ability level. And Leon, then you've asked, how do you pay for higher education access courses? Okay, now with the access courses that are through access to higher education courses at colleges, you would pay for them through something called an advanced learner loan. Um, so you would draw the money down from the government and then you would pay the money back once you've completed your studies. However, with the access to higher education loans, if you then go on and complete a degree, the cost of the access course gets wiped off your loan. So effectively, if you complete the university course as a result of doing the access to higher education course, it ends up costing you nothing. I hope that helps. Is that OK? OK, we're going to go on to the step three and I'm going to hand back to Mohammed. Casey, sorry, you've got your hand up. Did you want to say something there first? No, no you put I your just hand left up. it off, sorry. <laughs> you put your hand down, that's fine. I'm going to pass over to Mohammed and move on to step three. Okay, so step three is thinking about which, well, A, which institution where you, you might want to do a, a degree or, or a foundation degree. And then also thinking about uh, the types of different degrees. So you have the three year standard degrees, where you would either do a foundation year or you would already have a level three qualification, such as the ones my colleague Denise has suggested, such as A-levels, BTEC, um, and access to HE, or a foundation year, and you'd go on straight to a, a, a university degree. And the university degrees usually are three years. Uh, if, the, if you do it part-time, that can be up to six years. Um, and that's the standard uh, route. Now, we also have foundation degrees. Now, foundation degrees are generally linked to vocational areas. Now, the ones we have at the University of Leeds, for example, are in ch child and family studies. So if you're working within that sector, that, that's a degree which would be relevant to yourselves. Uh, or we have the learning and teaching foundation degree. Now, again, that's for people who are working within uh, an education setting. Generally, it means secondary or, 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 or primary schools. So you may you may be working as a uh, as a, a teaching assistant and you may want to think about progressing on and you'd, you'd be you could look at a foundation degree in learning and teaching. Uh, there are a few others. Uh, foundation degrees, um, uh, not at this university, but other universities in the area such as electronics. So if you're working in that sector, you may want to do a foundation degree. But generally, they're linked to a vocational area. So that, and in terms of how they they are, um, how, the mode of study is usually uh, a, a one day a week. Um, and you may be doing some of your work within the workplace. So if you're a, a learning and teaching assistant within a school, some of the work will be around uh, 
say session planning within the classroom that will count towards your degree and thereby that reduces the time uh, you'd need to finish the degree. So normally a part-time degree is six years, you may be able to finish a foundation degree in four or five years. So that's a university standard degrees, foundation degrees, and then we have the degree apprenticeships. Now the degree apprenticeships are generally access through employers so and generally it's it's large employers such as the nhs the local authority so within leeds university we have a nursing degree apprenticeships but the um, in terms of how you'd potentially apply for that course you'd first need to be working for the nhs before you could uh, access a degree apprenticeship so we have um, at least two degree apprenticeships in nursing and also in business management. And the business management, generally people are working for the local authority, so City Council, uh, Kirklees Council, Bradford Council. And again, the degree apprenticeships you would access via the employers. So that's the three different types of degrees. There's different modes of study within within those degrees. And like I says, a standard degree can be done part time and the part time generally is it's, it's five to six years. Uh, there are degrees at the say the open university, which can be done through distance learning and those can be done over a, a, a longer period of time. So eight to nine years, if that's what a student wanted to do. So, so step three is around thinking about what type of degree you'd, you'd, you'd like to pursue. And again, within the guidance interview, we could look at individually for you what the pros and cons are for each route, uh, depending on your, your, your situation. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, I can see Helena's put um, a message in the chat to say that she's got a university degree from a, another country. Um, you will be able to study um, another qualification in um, the UK, Helena, but it depends whether or not your degree is worth the same as a UK degree. Uh, you can find out that information from an organisation called NARIC. If your university degree is deemed to be the equivalent of a UK degree, then that would mean that if you needed to do any further study or if you wanted to do a degree in the UK, the problem would be that you wouldn't get funding to do that. So if you could afford to fund it yourself there's no problem um, if your university degree from your country is deemed to be at a lower level then yes you would be able to get funding to do the the full degree but they might take away years of study for the study that you've already done it is quite complicated so if you wanted to we could speak to you separately about that um, the information on NARIC is on the slides a little bit later on as well for some careers, um, there is also a step four. So in, in the examples that Mohammed gave for professional studies, if somebody, say, was doing a degree and the degree wasn't the right qualification that they needed to give them the formal qualification in the area of work they wanted to go into, they might then do postgraduate training. So that's study at a university that's beyond the degree level. Um, so that might be for something like teacher training, it might be for social work, it could be for a number of other qualifications as well. And for some other training, you can actually qualify on the job. So presume, say you did a degree and it wasn't in social work, but you wanted to become a social worker. There are some training courses that you can do within social work where you would actually get paid from day one and you would do your training to become a social worker on the job. Um, there are other examples of that in different workplaces as well. So there are your first four steps. They're the things that you would um, you would generally have to look at in order to then um, go into any kind of a different career. Casey, I'm going to hand back to you so that you can look at the whiteboard if that's OK. Yeah, no problem. Um, hope everyone's doing okay and, and 
kind of getting something from the information so far. Um, we just want to give people a little chance now to, um, to reflect a little bit. And we've put the statement of adults bring life and work experience into the study. Um, you know, we, we believe and we know that adults don't start off in a deficit when they come to university. They already um, they already have a wealth of knowledge and experiences. Um, so just on the slide, using the chat, uh, not the chat function, sorry, if you can, um, you can use T at the top if you click on that. And then I just want you to write down um, any of these life or work experiences that you think benefit study as an adult. Um, so just have a little think about the things that you do in your day-to-day -day life. Um, the skills, the life skills that you've developed over the years of being an adult. Um, and, you know, sometimes we take things for granted. So it could be some of the most basic, some of the most basic, basic skills actually um, go a really long way in studying as a mature student. So if you want to just have a little go at that, um, you can start now. And if, if you struggle to write on the whiteboard, then you can actually write in the chat function and we will transfer it across. Just give you a minute to have a go at Well, some really good ones coming up there then. So people management, time management, initiative, Yes, all things that will really, really benefit you uh, as a mature student. Stakeholder management, yep, yeah, absolutely. Doing the school run, well, we've definitely got time management in there, haven't we? But there'll also be communication skills at the school gate as well, I'm guessing. A bit of negotiation probably to get the kids there on time. Um, communication skills, absolutely, yeah. Organisation, yeah, you'll have lots and lots of skills around um, around organisation and that will help you immensely as a mature student. These are exactly the skills the admissions students are looking for when, when they are assessing applications for places. So generally, um, at universities like Leeds, uh, there's there's more applications than there are places. So what, what the admissions students tend to look for is exactly these kinds of skills, because these will indicate to the admissions tutor that you're more likely to be successful on a degree programme than not if you have people management skills, if you've got those communication skills, if you've done the school run and you've had to manage your time, manage resources, to, 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 to run a family, so it's, it's, it's all those skills, but it's how you put them forward in your application, uh, which, which the admissions students have to tick off to say, yes, oh yes, this is why we want to offer this mature applicant a place rather than somebody who's coming in uh, with, with no experiences at all. So yes, all these experiences are really valuable. Yes, thank you for that, Mohammed. Absolutely. And um, somebody asked right at the very beginning about whether mature um, applicants would get interviewed. And for the majority of the courses, certainly within the LLC, all of our applicants will get interviewed. And then these are the kind of skills that they um, the program managers are going to be looking for from you. Uh, we've got commitment there as well, which is great. Understanding the world, yeah, and understanding your place in it. That's uh, a really good skill. But these are all things that, of course, as a mature student joining a class of younger students, in some cases, we've got kind of half and half in the, in the classrooms. Um, your maturity and all these skills won't just help you, but you'll actually be helping the rest of the students as well, because they'll look to you as being a, more of a role model. Thank you very much for all contributing to that. That's That's been really helpful. I'm going to move on to the next slide now. Um, now, the next slides are all looking about 
particular roles into particular careers. So I don't want to waste any time if these are not careers that you would like to hear about. So just in the chat function, would you say whether or not you'd like to learn about routes into teaching, please? Okay, so Leon's okay. not not interested. Anybody interested in teaching at all? Well, what we'll do is we'll very briefly touch on teaching then, because it seems not a lot of people are interested in teaching with us. Okay, okay. Do you want us to quickly run through it then, or should we just skip the slide? Am I okay? Just let Mohammed know that there's some feedback coming from your audio. Mohammed, um, right. it's just a little bit, um, a little bit like um, a yeah, robotic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I was last week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Sarah, Sarah would like a brief overview into teaching. So usually to go into teaching, you have to have the GCSE. So whereas in some instances you can have the level two functional skills or the adult literacy numeracy, it's not the case for teaching. So you absolutely have to have maths and English grade C or four or above um, in English and maths and you also need GCSE in science if you're looking for primary teaching. You then need some kind of a level three qualification. So that could be the access to higher education course at a local college. It could be the foundation year at a university. If you have significant experience of already working in school, you might all be able to come into our courses through alternative entry. If you have level three teaching assistant or the higher level teaching assistant courses, that would also allow you entry onto the course for teaching. You then do a degree and the degree could be in a su curriculum subject if it's secondary teaching that you're wanting to go into but it could be any degree at all if you're looking at primary teaching. So one of our courses that we run in the Lifelong Learning Centre is a part-time course for adults called Learning and Teaching and that degree would be appropriate if you then wanted to go on and do teacher training in primary teaching. Following that, you would have postgraduate study, which would be a PGCE course, which is a postgraduate certificate of education. You can do that course full time or part time at a number of institutions, or you can do something called school direct which is where you're trained in the classroom um, and you can have that either paid, salaried or unsalaried. So you could, you're actually taught by teachers. Sometimes if you have had significant experience in schools before you do your degree and you were working as a higher level teaching assistant, you don't need the teacher training qualification because you already know how to teach. And that then would mean that you would have an assessment only route um, to get qualified teacher status and you'd be able to speak to your school there where you've been working in order to get that assessment. Is that okay? Can I pass over now to, we'll go on to the next one, and Mohammed, you can cover this one if you'd like to. Yeah, can I just add to the last one in terms of, of the, the, just uh, people do get confused about the QTS route. The QTS route, the important thing there is you have to be sponsored by a school. So unless you're actually within a school, um, you that option is not always open to you and even if you are within a school the school has to nominate you for that route so it's generally uh, the higher level teaching assistants who've been uh, assisting or even running classes for a significant period of time uh, and they've got significant experience before the school will nominate them for the QTS uh, assessment route uh, because from the outside that route can, could seem the most attractive where you don't have to go and do a degree or a PGC and you become a qualified teacher but in actual fact um, those routes are few and far between 
and they are they are uh, quite quite difficult to to access unless you've been in school for many many years. So okay, right. Shall we move to the next one? I just turn my mic on again. The next one that we were going to run through is routes into engineering. Is anyone interested in routes to engineering? Should we do that one or do we want to skip that one? Should we just go through it very quickly? Um, to get into engineering, you can have your GCSEs in maths and English, but quite a few universities will allow you in with level two qualifications instead. So it's not absolutely necessary for the industry for it to be a full GCSE. Following that, you would have an access to higher education course in engineering, or you could join a foundation year at some universities that would then progress on to their own university courses. Um, you could then have alternative entry. So if you'd already been working within engineering and felt as though you had significant experience, the program managers might say, yes, you can come straight on to the degree program. Um, level three engineering diploma, if you've been doing that in college or doing it in the workplace, that would be appropriate as well. Also, if you've been, done an apprenticeship and you've trained towards your MVQ level three in engineering, that would stand as a significant qualification to be able to, to join the degree programme immediately. Um, then you either get a degree or you could um, join an, employ, uh, a, an employer as a technician and then train as a degree apprenticeship on the job and as we said with um, some of the slides previously this is not a route that you would normally just apply directly to it's the employer who's employing you that would put you forward to them do the training for the degree from the workplace Can I anything just else add, of course sorry denise um, in terms of although you the gcc in maths is not essential for, for all routes into engineering. Uh, by its nature, engineering requires um, higher levels of mathematical ability, and having a GCSE in maths is, is immensely advantageous um, for you to be successful in a route towards engineering, uh, and, and the admissions tutors prefer uh, students to have done uh, a GCSE in maths, although it isn't essential and you could take mature entry or, or you may have done uh, uh, level two um, numeracy, but they do prefer the GCSE in maths for engineering because it's so helpful once you get further downstream onto your degree. Okay. Thank so you, Mohammed. Do you want to do the next one? Yeah, what's the right? So social work again. Now, social work generally um, they, they they look for five GCSEs in English and maths, in, including English and maths. Um, but at Leeds, for mature students, the the university will consider applications from people with English and maths at GCSE. Uh, grade C or above. And again, that is a professional body requirement. So if you don't have the GCSEs, that would be your first step to think about how you'd want to gain those uh, GCSEs. After that, um, the universities look for a level three, such as an access to higher education or a foundation year um, or a BTEC in health and social care. Uh, so that's the type of qualification they're looking for. But as a mature applicant, if you don't have those and you've got significant exper caring experience uh, in, a, in, a, in a workplace setting, uh, again, the universities would look at your application as long as you've got a, a GCSE in English and Maths and you're willing to pursue something like a, a foundation year, either part time or full time. Uh, then the next stage is looking at how you'd you'd get into social work and again the the obvious route would be a degree in social work but there are other routes and as i suggested earlier on right at the beginning of the session uh, our ba in professional studies 
would allow somebody to go and do an MA in social work, which is postgraduate training. So you don't have to initially get onto the degree in social work. You could do something where you could you could access modules which which would set you up towards social work if you're not entirely sure about social work. Because a lot of people get confused around um, what actually social work is and what supporting vulnerable groups, what the other roles may be. Um, because training within social work involves right from uh, fostering to, to, to child protection, uh, to working with different vulnerable groups, such as the elderly, the disabled. Now, for example, some people you know, would find the child protection uh, quite challenging. Um, and again, you know, you, this is where a guidance interview can be invaluable, looking at the different subject areas and what roles they would lead into um, and, and exploring what you mean by social work and what you would mean, what it would mean in a day to day job. Um, so that's the, 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 the it's really worth thinking about. Is it social work you'd want to do or is it allied areas to social work? Okay. Thank you, Mohammed. So we'll run through this one briefly as well, routes into nursing and midwifery. The Midwifery and Nursery, Nursing Council does ask for five GCSEs, including maths and English, in order to um, start doing the training. Um, so this is one of those things where the GCSEs are usually very important. Now, some of our foundation programmes that then progress on to nursing, we will allow you to be able to start them with just maths and English at GCSE. GCSE, but it must be the math, it must be the full GCSE. There are some other universities, such as Bradford, that will allow you on to do these training courses with the level two equivalent. So they will allow you with the functional skills or the um, adult literacy numeracy. And um, the best thing to do with that is just to check the re entry requirements for each individual university. Once you're on, you've got your GCSEs. Um, you need to do some kind of a, a level three qualification, which could be the access to higher education. There is one that's professional um, for healthcare professions uh, that you can do that can lead you into a number of different medical professions. You can do the foundation year at universities that attach directly onto the nursing or midwifery within that same university. And something like, again, the BTEC National in Health and Social Care could be a useful route for you. From there, you could then go straight into the degree in nursing and midwifery if you get the right grades. If you are all wor already working in the NHS and you're doing a role such as a healthcare assistant and you've been enrolled for a year or so, you could ask your line manager if they would put you forward for the degree apprenticeship. So this is the apprenticeship that we run through the university, but it is only the NHS managers that can put you forward onto that degree. So as another route, if you are already working within the NHS, it is worth thinking about that. Is there anything you'd like to add to that, Mohammed? No, I think you've covered that one. Yep. Okay. Great. So before, sorry, before we go on to this, um, this next slide, if there's another career that you're considering that we haven't touched upon and you'd like us to talk you through the route, would you just like to quickly put it in the chat function, please? Otherwise, I'm going to hand over to Casey to do the uh, the whiteboard again, if that's all right. Yeah, I would say we're coming to the, the kind of last six or seven minutes of our session as well. So if there are questions that we um, we've not, you know, things we've not covered or things you'd like to know more about, then do start popping them in the chat function now and we will pick them up as we go through the last couple of slides. Um, but we'll just have one more go at uh, writing on the whiteboard or popping it in the chat and we'll transfer it to answer this uh, question. So study can open up doors for jobs in the future. Obviously, this session is about inspiring people to study for the job that they'll love. 
Um, so we just want to draw on some, draw out some of those skills that people think studying will actually help towards f their future jobs. Um, and there's many, many skills that um, that actually studying offers. Um, and I'm sure Mohammed and Denise will will definitely come up with a with a couple of those transferable skills as well. So if I could just ask people to have a go at pressing the T function and then clicking on the screen and just writing a little answer in each there. Thank you. Yeah, somebody's put technology and absolutely we're having to learn technology um, very much so at the moment with all the online work that we're having to do. But yeah, you will certainly develop lots of new technology skills through your study, which could be very beneficial in the workplace. Reading, yeah, and knowing how to skim read and how to um, absorb what you're reading, how to understand what you're reading, how to do the research. Absolutely, well done. Looking for opportunities. So, yeah, your study skills are certainly going to help you when you are having to look for opportunities. It'll certainly open the door to a whole realm of opportunities that you wouldn't have before you've done your study. Confidence, yeah. Most of our mature students um, come in probably lacking confidence, but leave with loads of confidence. It's really wonderful to see how people grow through doing the study. I think Helen has put knowing your strengths and weaknesses in the chat box. Absolutely, it, it gives you that those skills and also uh, independence in terms of thinking independently. So that's a key skill you'll you'll learn uh, as a, as a, as a student. Uh, apart, apart from other skills such as self motivation, time management, uh, team working. Um, organisational skills, organizational. lots of uh, communication take, skills, yeah. Absolutely, taking criticism in terms of, you know, getting feedback on, on your work and how to handle that. Um, a lot of students at the end of their degrees tell me, you know, I'm, I'm much better at taking uh, criticism before I can, you know, it, it was all about oh, me taking it personally, but this is more about my development. Um, um, resolving conflicts in terms of how to how to develop those skills where you can you can think from a from a analytical perspective and resolve conflict. So these are the kind of skills students tell us at the end of their degrees that they think they've developed. Yeah, they've got some really, really good ones there. Yeah, I'm going to move yeah. on just because I'm I'm conscious of the time. But thank you for that. There's loads of really good um, skills that you've got there and they are absolutely relevant. So there's just some um, for some careers, it really helps if you do have some experience. So whilst you're thinking about what degree you might want to go on to and the steps you need to take towards that degree might also be worthwhile kind of dipping your toe in the water and getting some experience. There's lots of volunteering opportunities that you can do to get that experience. There's national opportunities and um, things like doit.org is a good website to be looking at for national opportunities. Um, work experience um, is usually documented on some of the careers information and NHS work experience is going to be absolutely vital if you're thinking about doing anything within the NHS. That could be in terms of nursing, in terms of midwifery, radiography, dentistry, anything that requires patient contact, it's really worthwhile getting that NHS work experience. 
We touched right at the very beginning about qualifications from outside the UK. If you do have qualifications from outside the UK, there is an organisation called NARIC, and NARIC compares qualifications from all over the world to UK qualifications and they will be able to tell you how your qualification compares so then you'll be able to see whether you've got the right qualifications to be able to join a university program or whether or not there might be something else that you need to do first. Usually if your GCSEs compare to um, you know, UK comparisons they usually say that you would always need to do your GCSE in English in addition um, that the GCSE English usually isn't comparable um, so you can do GCSE English which is for free in most places around the UK but you could also do an IELTS qualification as well but the IELTS qualification usually has a cost implication and also just to add the IELTS is a is a test it's not a program or a course of study which is going to, where you're going to be developing uh, your English language skills. So it's always, if, you, if, if, if it's a, a choice between GCSE and the IELTS, I always say uh, go for the GCSE because that's a qualification you can take forward uh, to, 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 for whatever career, whereas the IELTS is only accepted as a test. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, just to point you in terms of uh, careers information, there's a brilliant website called prospects.ac.uk and on there they have job profiles. Now you can look up any job that you would like to do um, and what it will do is it will tell you exactly what you do in the, day, in the job day to day. It will give you the salary, it will give you the hours of work, it will tell you everything you need to know about how do you get qualified in that role and it will tell you the skills that you need to do that job. If you're not sure what career you might want to go towards, there is also a quiz on there as well, where it looks at the things that you would like to be involved in a career, and then it looks at careers that match what you're looking for. Um, it also gives you all of the careers information broken down into different sectors, so that if you want a similar job to, say, being a social worker, but you're not sure what it is, all the jobs similar to jobs that help people are all within that same sector. Anything else you want to add to that, Mohammed? No, that's great. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a, lovely, a really good uh, site as an initial to start off with, to give you loads of ideas. Lovely. So if anybody needs any further guidance, um, Mohammed and I are free to have a telephone appointment with you. We can talk about your particular um, experiences, your particular experiences in the workplace and your qualifications, and we can help you make the next steps. Should I hand back to you then, uh, Casey, to wrap up? <laughs> Yeah, thanks very much for that, Mohammed and Denise. Um, that was really great. Uh, thank everybody for coming today. Um, if you wouldn't mind just um, just clicking on the poll at the front of the screen, um, just letting us know what you thought of today's session, if it was useful. And also in the chat function, there's an evaluation form link, if you wouldn't mind um, copy and pasting that and having a go at uh, just giving us some feedback. Um, and we do send it out over email, but it can be a bit easier just to do it straight away so you don't forget. And we do appreciate people getting involved in these sessions. And please do um, book a one-to-one -one guidance appointment. I think, you know, this is um, this is an extension of them guidance appointments. We're just trying to collate all this brilliant knowledge that Mohammed and Denise have and share it with you. But you can have a, um, a personal appointment. Um, just for your for your personal circumstances really to go through that we've also got a Facebook Facebook group called return to study and we would really recommend that you join that group and stay connected with other people who are current students and non-current students who just want to um, learn more about university opportunities um, and then our land page is there in the chat as well and we have lots more events coming up over the next week and a half um, and a couple of more sessions this week that Olivia is just telling us about. So do do book in for that. Um, and yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for coming today. And um, I'm going to end the recording now.